Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial on how to code a full width header video. On my screen is a prototype of what we're going to be coding today. As you can see in the background there's a video of a cruise ship spanning the width of the header. Layered on top is the navbar and a heading. Video headers are super simple and fun to do. They're also really popular and make great advertising tools. For example, Airbnb has a video header on their homepage and layered on top is a heading, a subheading, and a ghost button. The basis for this tutorial is HTML5's video tag. If you don't know much about that, don't worry, I'll explain as we go along. You will need three things for this tutorial. Number one, you will need to download a Twitter bootstrap theme called Agency. You can download it from startbootstrap.com or from Learnable itself. Number two, you will need the actual video in different formats to accommodate the three major browsers, Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. Lastly, you will need a code editor, and I'm going to be using Sublime. So let's go ahead now and start setting things up for our video header project. We are first going to download the Twitter Bootstrap Agency theme. Once that's done, go ahead and unzip the file, and I'm going to unzip it to my desktop. Then. Open up the main theme folder and inside the main theme folder, we'll create a new subfolder called video. This is where all your videos will go in. After that's done, using your code editor, open up the agency theme folder and I'm going to open it here from my desktop. Then on the left side, click on index.html. This is the file where all our HTML code will go in. So now let's go ahead and start coding our HTML. We won't really be styling the nav bar for now, so skip that. Come down to lines 81 through 89 where it says header. Delete the header tags and everything in between. I'm going to go ahead and demarcate this location on my screen so that you can more easily read what I'm going to be typing. Now, in between the two pink lines, I'm going to be writing my HTML code. The first tag will be a div. So div class is equal to header container. Go ahead and close the div with an end comment of end of header container. Next, let's make another div. Div class is equal to video container. Go ahead and close this div as well. End of video container. So what we have is a header container which contains the video container inside which we'll place our video using HTML5's video tag and its attributes. The video tag makes it really easy to embed a video into a web page. So now open video tag and close video tag and off video. Now, there will be two parts to the video tag in this tutorial. In the first part, we'll specify the attributes in the opening video tag and in the second part, we'll specify the source location and types of video formats. So go up to your opening video tag. The first attribute is preload is equal to true. This ensures that the video loads as soon as possible. Second, we have autoplay. Autoplay is a boolean whose default value is set to true. So you can have autoplay as it is or autoplay equals to autoplay. Now, as a general rule, you only use one or the other. So you only use preload or autoplay. Autoplay is the preferred option since it's supported by Internet Explorer 9 and preload isn't. Next, we have a third attribute, which is going to be loop. Now loop is also a boolean whose default value is true. So you can have loop by itself or loop is equal to loop like I have on here. Next, we set the volume to zero so that the video is muted. The last attribute is poster whose value is the source location of a picture. For me, that's just pic.jpg 
because my picture is in the same location as my index.html file as you can see here on the left side. So that concludes part number one of the video tag. Let's go ahead now and do part number two of the video tag. Now in the second part, we'll be indicating the source location of the video and its type across three different formats, MP4, WebM, and OGV. We do it across three different formats since there is no one set standard across browsers for video display. Let's start with MP4 first. So go ahead and open tag source SRC is equal to open and close quotes in between the quotes video, which is the name of the folder where we stored our video, forward slash cruise.mp4, which is the name of the video file outside of the quotes type, is equal to open and close quotes in between the quotes video, forward slash mp4 and close the tag. Now we start with mp4 first because it's the preferred first source type and is supported across major browsers including Internet Explorer 9. Let's go ahead and do the same for the other two video formats. So open tag source src is equal to video forward slash cruise dot webm and then type is equal to video forward slash webm and close the tag. Webm is supported by Firefox, Chrome and Opera. Lastly, open tag source src is equal to video forward slash cruise dot ogv and type is equal to video forward slash ogg and close the tag. Don't worry about the discrepancy between the file name cruise.ogv and the file type ogg. For our purpose, it makes no difference. Now, outside of the video tag and outside of the video container, let's open a h3 tag. And now go ahead and close the h3 tag. This is where our heading will be. So in between the tags, in caps lock type full, with header video tutorial. Now this concludes the HTML portion for our video. Let's go ahead and now write some HTML for our navbar. We won't be making many changes to the navbar. We're just going to add in some custom colors, change the text and center the navbar items. So come down to line number 49 where it says navbar brand. We're going to put it in a custom color here first. So go ahead and type style is equal to color and my custom color is going to be pound 083A5B and before we do anything else go ahead and copy this because we're going to be using it quite a bit. I'm going to replace start bootstrap with learnable.com. Next, come down to line number 54 where it says nav navbar navbar right, replace right with center. This will take care of centering our navbar items. Now we're going to add custom colors and change the text of the individual navbar items. So the first one where it says services, just paste. And once you're done that, replace the color with pound FCA13F. And instead of services, I'm going to replace it with HTML and CSS. Come down to the next item, paste once again. And my custom color for this will be pound F7BA34. And instead of portfolio, I'm going to go in and type JavaScript. Come down to the next item once again, paste. And my custom color for this will be pound 487BB4. And instead of about, I'm going to type in PHP. Paste once again where it says team. The custom color for this will be pound DC, sorry, D. C4937 and instead of team I'm going to replace it with Ruby. 
come down to the last item and we paste once again. The custom color for this is pound 3C B C 8D. And instead of contact, I'm going to type design and UX. Go ahead and save your work. Once that's done, let's open up the index.html file in our browser. As you can see, the video isn't quite full width and the heading seems off and the navbar needs to be styled a bit more. So let's go ahead and open up a code editor. On the left side, open up the agency.css file. This is where our custom CSS will go in. So let's go ahead now and start coding our CSS. Come down to the bottom of the page. We're first going to write CSS for a header and video containers, followed by the video and then the heading and navbar at the end. So let's go ahead now and select our header container class. Give it a width of 100% and a height of 900 pixels. I've chosen 900 because between 700 to 900 works best for this video. After that, set its border left at none and its border right at none as well followed by a position of relative and lastly a padding of 20 pixels. Now all these are positioning elements. You can also give it further style by adding a border. Now let's write some CSS for a video container class. Give it a position of absolute. We do this because we want the video container to be fixed within the header container. After that, give it a top position at 0%, a left position at 0% as well. And we do this because we want the video container now to be centered within the header container. Then give it a height of 100% and a width of 100% as well. And we'll set its overflow to be hidden. This is because we don't want the contents of the video container to be spilling into the header container. Let's write some CSS for our video now. Let's give it a position of absolute as well. Now this is because we want the video to be fixed within the video container. After that, set its Z index at minus one. This ensures that the video is positioned in the background. Any elements such as headings will be layered on top and be in the foreground. After that, let's give it an opacity of 0 0.78. The lower the number, the more transparent the video will be. I've chosen 0 0.78 because then the colors kind of match up the colors in the nav bar. And lastly, give it a width of 100%. This finishes the CSS for our video elements. Now let's write the CSS for our heading. Give it a custom color of pound 3C BC 8D. Give it a Z index of plus one this is because we want the heading to be layered on top of the video and be in the foreground. After that, give it its text align to center, a margin right of auto, and a margin left of auto as well. We'll set its margin top to be at 10%. This is because we want the heading to be below the nav bar. After that, give it a border of three pixels solid and a custom color followed by a padding of 10 pixels and then a border radius of 15 pixels to ensure that we have nice rounded borders. Now let's give it a width of 700 pixels and set the letter spacing of the text to 3 pixels. 
with a font size of 25 pixels. As for the font family, let's go up to line number 55, just where it says H1 to H2, etc. Go ahead and copy the font family. Then come down and let's paste that. This finishes the CSS for a heading. Now let's go up and write the CSS for a navbar. Come up to line number 177. Just where it says navbar default, navbar brand. Now go ahead and delete the font family in there. And we're just going to paste the font family that we had copied earlier. This ensures that the font family is consistent throughout the header. After that, come down to line number 207, just where it says navbar default.nav. Now to this, we're just going to add a custom font size of 25 pixels. Once that's done, go ahead and save your work. Now, we're going to refresh the index.html file. And there you go, a full-width header video. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.